Hello, Bro Steph here. Welcome to Prophecy Insights with me, Bro Steph. I wanted to talk to you today about something very interesting, and it's called quantum computing. And um, also, uh, we're going to look at Revelation 13 and also discuss what's going on with Amazon right now. And uh, let me get this adjusted. And there's some things Amazon is doing that they don't, uh, you know, they're not doing this thinking about Revelation 13, you know, the mark of the beast. That's not what's going on. But, but the technologies that are being used today could most certainly be used down the road uh, to track people much more efficiently than we're doing right now. So first, let's do this. Let's look at Revelation 13. I have it queued up here. Let me uh, just read it to you. We're going to start at verse 16. He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads. Interesting, the word on is used, not in. I went and, and looked up uh, Hebrew uh, and Greek connotations for this scripture, and without a shadow of a doubt, the scripture's referring to it being on someone not in them, like, like it's not something that they would ingest. It, and I'm even beginning to wonder, it may not even be a laser that's put into the bone structure, but it's something that will be on them, on their person. So I thought that was interesting. I just wanted to point that out. And that no one would uh, be able to buy or sell except one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. And then verse 18, here is wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. His number is 666. Now, I'm not going to get into all the, you know, all of those discussions on 666 and gematria and counting and calculating uh, various people's names to see if they could be the Antichrist. Because I really don't care to spend a whole lot of time on the devil or on his helpers. I prefer to spend my time uh giving you information that's going to encourage you to want to share with others and encourage you in your walk with the Lord. That's where I want to focus my time tonight. So here's, here's what's going on with Amazon. Um, Amazon has been experimenting with stores that are fully run by automation. Um, they're retail outlets, little outlet stores, and you sign up on your phone or on your, your laptop or your computer, whatever the case may be. You sign up and you give them your payment information and all that. And then when you want to buy something, if there's a local retail outlet near you, an Amazon local retail outlet, you just... Go into the store. The moment you walk in and get, and the doors open, the facial recognition scan happens in a nanosecond. And, um, and so the facial recognition identifies you in seconds. And they know who you are. And they check the computer systems to make sure that you are a registered uh, Amazon shopper. And 
you take a bag and you go around to the store and buy what you want. You, you don't buy it. You put it in the bag. When you're done shopping, you turn around and you walk out through the scanning system. It scans everything in your bag, charges your card. You don't even pull out a credit card or anything. You just get the bill in the mail or uh, on your device. Now, this is happening right now in the Amazon stores. Facial recognition. That fast, that efficient, and thousands of people come into their outlets, check in, check out, without giving a, a checkout person anything. It's all computerized, all run by computers. So I wanted to share that with you. Now, you may be thinking, well, that sounds like it's pretty cool. I agree. I mean, it's not the mark of the beast that Revelation 13 talks about. It's very convenient. It's very cool, very trendy. I agree to all of that. I love technology. I'm a, you know, I build websites. This is what I do for work. I uh, I'm into this kind of thing, right? But let's just think for a moment. Let's fast forward. Zoom, we fast forward the tape. And let's just say, I don't know, we fast forward 50 years from now. Uh, just arbitrarily picking a number. 50 years from now, we go forward in time. And the Antichrist system is set up. I mean, it's running, it's operating, and uh, you're a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, and you walk into your local Amazon store, and all of a sudden, your red flag, facial recognition, picks up on you. You're red flagged as an enemy of the state, and your account is frozen, you can't buy or sell. And in fact, by the time you get from being in the store, out of the store, the police are standing there ready to arrest you. Or a robot is standing there ready to detain you and hold you for the authorities. This is what can happen with this kind of technology. I'll tell you a story. Back in the early 90s, I was complaining and yelling and screaming about all of the signals, traffic signals, having cameras on them. They were starting to install them everywhere. And I was telling everybody it's a mistake. You don't want this to happen. Nobody would listen to me. They thought I was being hyper um, concerned. Well, now, and, they, and, you know, and the police departments and everybody said, we'll never use this technology to look to see who's in the car. We only want it to read license plates. Well, we found out later, uh, about 10 years after all of the cameras nationwide have been installed, that, in fact, they do look inside the cars and they can identify the people that are in the cars. So there was a more aggressive plan and they used, we just want to keep you safe. And it's for your own security and safety that we need to do this. They used that lie to install all the cameras. And now you can't go anywhere in the United States without being picked up by who knows how many cameras. So we got that going on. And, and now we have in Amazon, like I said, facial recognition that is so efficient, it's in seconds everything happens. And, and now I want to talk to you. That's Amazon. Now I want to talk to you about quantum computing and computers. Now I'm going to flip over 
to this article. I'm not going to read this whole headline to you. I've linked it into the description of this video so that you can click on it uh, later and read this on your own if you choose. But I will, let me just, let me read you the headline and read a paragraph or two, okay? This is very, very interesting. Quantum computing leaps ahead in 2019 with new power and speed. It was a great year for these weird machines. And um, this is from CNET. Uh, very, very well done. It was written December 12th, 2019. Quantum computers are getting a lot more real. No, you won't be playing Call of Duty on any one of them anytime soon. But Google, Amazon, Microsoft, or Getty Computing, and IBM all made important advances in 2019 that could help bring computers governed by weird laws and based, computers based and working at the atomic level working with atoms and protons and all that at the subatomic level. Uh, and, and working through the laws of physics that is really tough for most human beings to wrap their minds around. Google's declaration of quantum supremacy was the most headline-grabbing moment in the field. The achievement more limited than the grand term might suggest demonstrated that quantum computers could someday tackle computing problems beyond the reach of conventional classical computers, proving quantum computing progress is crucial. We're still so we are still still several breakthroughs away from realizing the full version of quantum computing. Qubits, the tiny stores of data that quantum computers use, need to be improved. So, so do the finicky control systems used to program and read quantum computers. Still today, the results help justify tomorrow's research funding to sustain the technology when the flashes of hype inevitably fizzle. Now, let me go down. And I want to tell you how fast a quantum computer is compared to your laptop, your desktop, or your cell phone. Uh, let me get down there because I don't want to get into all the technical stuff on this with you. Okay, here it is. Here it is. And this is why I chose this article to be part of this video. The Revelation 13, Amazon, and quantum computing. What do they all have in common? Now, here it is. Google achieved quantum supremacy this year, taking 200 seconds to perform on a 53-qubit quantum computer chip, a particular task that is calculated, that it calculated, would take the fastest supercomputer, okay, are you ready? The fastest supercomputer over 10,000 years to compute. What Google's quantum computer did in just minutes. Google also said it plans to follow IBM's existing business by making its quantum computers available to outsiders as a cloud computing service in 2020. That's how close to this kind of computing we are. It's extremely fast. So Google's computer solved the problem in minutes that would take my laptop over 10,000 years to compute and to solve. Here's another one. Back in 1997, let me read this one to you. 
Remember when IBM's computer, Deep Blue, defeated chess champion Gary Kasparov in 1997? It was able to gain a competitive advantage because it examined 200 million possible moves each second. 200 million moves every second. A quantum machine would be able to calculate, are you ready for this? One trillion moves per second. Well, it beat the grand champion and uh, it did it in no time flat. This year, Google stated publicly that it would produce a viable quantum computer within the next five years and added that they would reach quantum supremacy with a 50 qubit quantum computer. The top supercomputers can still manage everything a five to 20 qubit quantum, uh, quantum computer can, but will be surpassed by a machine with 50 qubits and will attain supremacy at that point. So there we go. The race is on. The race for quantum computing, doing trillions of calculations a second. How easy would it be for a computer like that to manage for the Antichrist all of the people alive on planet Earth, all of their decision-making capabilities and potentials, the computer will be able to hypothesize where someone might be before they even know that they're going to be there based on their decision-making algorithms that the powers that be will put in place. So they'll hypothesize that we need to Get, get this person in jail because they're a danger to society, because they're a believer in Jesus Christ, and they'll compute that based on their decision processes that they have in this computer, uh, that they'll go from point A to point B within the next hour, and they'll be there to pick them up before the person even knows that that's where they're going to end up. I mean, this is huge. The, the, it blows me away. If you understand computers, this is boggling the mind. And I only bring it up so that we understand that the importance of having our relationship solidified with Jesus is more important now than probably any time in history because now all of the computer power needed to manage the world is coming online right now. So the mark of the beast will be able to be managed. The people will be able to be managed. The Antichrist will have decision-making capability on his cell phone. He'll get red flagged by his quantum computer, the beast. That's probably what they'll call it, the beast. And he'll be able to go send out an alert to the police in Sector 25 that they should go and capture Stephen McCarroll because he's preaching the 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 uh, gospel and he's breaking the law. Bam! And they go out and get me. Now I'm counting and and looking forward to the the catching away of the church and the rapture, and that will be with the Lord at this point. I mean, that's what I'm looking to. I'm looking to hearing that heavenly shofar blow, and boom, I'll disappear and be with the Lord. That's what I'm hoping for, right? I'm sure that's what you're hoping for. But I bring this to your attention, like I said, to encourage you to walk with Christ and to do everything you, you can to spread the good news that Jesus is coming soon. And yeah, Kimmy's right. She just said it's all coming together so fast. It is. It is coming together very quickly. 
And and then to cap this off, can you imagine a computer that can do that can do one trillion calculations every second? Uh, I mean, <clears throat> it's mind-boggling. It's mind-boggling. Anyway, that's what's coming online. And I can guarantee you, if they've got computers like this coming online, they're going to use it in the Antichrist's world. It's going to be used to promote his kingdom and to put down the kingdom of God. It will be used against us. But uh, like I said, the fact that it's so close to being a reality now, computers that are operating at the atomic level. Um, you, you remember the, the, the series Star Trek? You know, back in the 60s when I was a kid, it used to blow my mind, you know, to see uh, uh, Captain Kirk flip up his f flip phone, imitation flip phone, and talk to someone or hit the, the button on his uniform. Uh, Kirk here, and everything was done wirelessly. It just blew us away. Well, now I'm on wireless. I have no cords attached to my phone, and here we are. You get to see me, and I get to share my thoughts with you. Wireless, just like Captain Kirk. Beam me up, Scotty. I mean, we're living in that time now. And, and as we get quantum computing on board, they're going to be able to crack the code on how to travel at the speed of light. These computers will figure it out. So nothing's going to be um, uh, probably impossible for the human race at that point. And I just think that God is going to uh, get involved in a big way. I mean, he's going to come into our time continuum through the return of Christ and have to put a stop to it because I think it's going to get totally out of control and if it was allowed to continue, like Jesus said, the world would cease to exist. Because man can't control this kind of power and this kind of this kind of uh ingenuity can get out of hand and out of control very quickly. So tell everyone you know that Jesus is coming back soon. And and encourage them to go to bro stuff. If you're not a you know a, you feel uncomfortable talking to people, just tell them go to brostuff.com, scroll down the page, and read up right there on how to ask Christ into your life. I have it all right there. I've done all the work for you. There's some videos there, some great information by people that are much smarter than me, and. Uh, so you can lead people to the Lord by using my website as a tool. And it's available there for everybody. So if you don't know the Lord, ask him into your life. It, it'd be the best decision you could ever make in your life. Get everything wrong in your life. Get that one decision right. And ultimately, that's all that matters. You'll be in heaven with all of us. So... Please ask Christ into your life today. Do it today. It is the most important thing you could, you could do in your life. You'll never be asked to do anything more important than accepting Christ and making sure that your soul is secure in him. I'd like to thank all of you for tuning in uh, tonight. And I'd like to uh, wish you all the best. Um, we'll probably be able to, we'll be talking, I'm sure, before Christmas. But if not, have yourselves a Merry Christmas and a very Happy New Year. I'll try to do another report before the New Year. So uh, keep looking up. Why? Because Jesus is coming back. That's why. I'll see you again real soon. Bye for now.